All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a couple MCP servers to this particular agent. Now, this agent is gonna help us with IT operations and IT service management, so we're going to have the ability to create, update IT incidents in ServiceNow. We're also gonna have the ability to go ahead and share updates with stakeholders. Now, I've included a stakeholder email address, it's my email address in this Compose. And then inside of our prompt, we can see what this agent is able to do, including the ability to go ahead and send email to those stakeholders. So how do we add an MCPC, MCP server? So what we can do is click on this add, and you'll notice here that we've always had add an action, but now we have the ability to go ahead and add an MCP server. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then what we can see is the different MCP servers that are available to us. So in this list, this contains the what we call managed MCP servers. So these are connectors that are hosted inside of Azure and are exposed over the MCP protocol. Now the one that we're interested in is going to be this email management MCP server, which is part of the Office 365 connector. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new connection and I'm going to go ahead and use this create as per user connection, otherwise known as OBO on behalf of, so that when this MCP server gets called, it gets called in the context of the logged in user in the chat agent and we're gonna use their credentials to go ahead and send that email. So let's go ahead and send uh, sign in and create this connection. Okay, so that's done. Now what you're gonna find a little bit interesting here, especially if you've used tools before. Uh, when we've used tools, we've always had to provide agent parameters as inputs. So if we went ahead and used the regular connector here, we would have to go ahead and expose like the to, the subject, the body as agent parameters. We don't have to do that here. Uh, we do have a couple uh, advanced parameters here, but we're not actually going to go ahead and use them here. Uh, headers and then allow tools. Uh, expect some additional enhancements here where maybe there's some particular tools that are part of this out-of-box MCP server that you wouldn't want someone to use. You would have, the, well, you do have the ability to restrict them, uh, expect a more tailored experience going forward. So this is our email MCP server. I'm just gonna save this, it's always good to save. Now, what are other options that we have here, right? So if we add MCP servers, there is the custom. Now that's gonna be out of scope for this particular video, but if you had a custom connector MCP server, you can go ahead and call that here. Now, what we are gonna do though, is we're going to go ahead and call our own uh, MCP server or what I would consider a remote MCP server. And so what we can do is click on this and then go ahead and create a connection. And so here we've got the opportunity to give it a name. We've got the different authentication type. In this case, we'll choose OAuth. And then we've got a series of configuration that we need to go ahead and make here. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I've already gone ahead and created a Logic App MCP server. So this is a remote Logic Apps MCP server. Let's just go ahead and take a quick look at that. Okay, so I'm actually in a totally different subscription. So this truly is remote. And I've used the API Center Wizard and go ahead and, and look for videos. Uh, we'll have a link in, in the additional resources in the blog post if you wanna go ahead and see additional demos. But I've got three tools here. I've got a create record tool, which is a lot gonna allow us to create an IT incident. And we're gonna expose a few different parameters as part of our request trigger. And we can then go ahead and map those into a create record operation, which is going to create an IT incident. So that's great. Now, when we use the API Center or even the Foundry uh, you know, wizard to go ahead and create these MCP servers and tools, what we do provide is authentication. Out of the box, we'll go ahead and we'll set up OAuth for you automatically, which is great. Now, what does that typically look like? It looks like this. If you go into an app registration uh, that was actually created from that wizard, we're gonna go ahead and have something set up here. So there's gonna be values that we're gonna use in that other connection experience. And this is where you're gonna go ahead and get them from. So things like your client ID, your object ID, uh, actually not that, your client ID, your tenant ID, 
and also your application ID URI. Uh, you're going to use that as well. And then there's one other thing that you're gonna to need to go ahead and do, and that's gonna go ahead and create a secret. So we don't actually use the secrets when we're setting up the Logic Apps MCP server, but for this particular connection type, you're gonna to need to go ahead and create that secret. So you can go ahead, uh, create it, note it, and uh, then you're gonna to have to use it here in shortly. So let's go ahead and flip back to our Logic App. Now here we can see the MCP server URL. That's gonna be the URL of our MCP server. We're gonna see authority, tenant, audience. We're gonna use a secret type, and then we're gonna use that client ID and secret. So let me pause the video, and then we'll go ahead, and I'll populate this, come back and share what I can share, and that should give you some pointers on how you actually get this all wired up. All right, so here we go. Now, your URL is obviously gonna be unique to you, so um, that won't make sense for you. Uh, the authority should be the same, so login.microsoftonline.com. Uh, the tenant ID is gonna be unique for you, uh, the audience is gonna be unique for you, and then your client ID and secret will be also unique for you as well. So I'm just gonna give this a proper name and we'll go ahead and create that connection. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is save this and we will head over to the chat and give this a try. All right, so we're gonna create a new chat session here and we're just gonna say hi. And here we can see that the agent has responded back to us. So now what are we gonna do is create an IT incident. So I'm just gonna say create IT incident. And here we know that our agent has been able to call our MCP server to do tool discovery because this is information that is being requested by our MCP server and in particular our create incident tool where we need to provide these inputs. So let's go ahead and do that. So great, it's gonna go ahead and go do that. All right, so it's gone ahead and created a ticket, uh, 1212. What's also interesting here is that it's assigned to database group. We have a tool called list assignment groups. And what it's gone ahead and done is it's gone and reached out to that, that particular tool without us even seeing that, and then using the response from that tool to feed the create incident so that this could be logged to the right team, which is great. Now, we should also see a notification has been sent to our stakeholders. Let's just go ahead and check our inbox. And sure enough, we can see ticket 1212. We've got a ticket there. So that has actually taken place uh, using our uh, MCP server for email. And it's also gone ahead and done that in the context of the logged in user using OBO. So I'd already logged in before, so we didn't see that pop up, but that did take place and has actually been authenticated, which is pretty cool.